Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blink and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark! Show with Mark, episode number 478. I'm your host, Blake, and I um, had an experience over the weekend at an emo fest, emo night, that I felt very, 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 very old. <sighs> I, I'm, I might be getting, I'm way too old for like headbanging and mosh pits. I'm not gonna lie, getting too old for that stuff. Who got my co host? First of all, the man who got way too much joy out of an injury that we'll be talking about later in the show. The biggest on podcast, thanks, Al. How you doing? <sighs> Big sigh. That's we'll talk about say. it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I do definitely want to talk about it. Fucking a. And, and the man that and, and what's been on our other call is the only person that had a good football weekend. The <laughs> 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 uh, man with Mark Dad, how you doing? Doing well. Uh, uh, opening yeah. week. We'll talk about it. On the list. On the list. We'll get there. We'll okay. get there. All right. Okay. All right. I just want to start the show. Um. So actually, we're opening up. So funny part is the song we're opening up with. I actually had on the list like two weeks ago, okay. but then obviously we did like tribute intros the last couple of weeks. So I um just saved it for the day, and it's kind of fitting, fitting how my weekend was. So this is um, Bowling for Soup. Getting old sucks, but everyone is doing it. <laughs> he said the truth. So although this is actually the name of their new tour. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought it was like, but I, I, this is actually a song that came out like two years ago. I never heard it before, but this is the name of the tour. So I was like, oh, sweet. This is actually a really good song. <laughs> oh. There you go. So uh, I, I am actually, just people listening, I am not feeling 100%. My voice is a little shop, and I think it's between the weather. Literally, when I went to work this morning, it was 57 degrees, and now the, it's beautiful outside, and it's like almost 70. Like, it is ridiculous weather around here. Like, yeah, it'll be uh, like that here soon. Figure. So, but I'm just so everybody knows. So this might be a little bit shorter. shorter. No, the plus the run sheet a little shorter. Or the slow wrestling news week, which is also a good thing. So we will talk about other things besides wrestling for a change today. Uh-huh. But um, let's get into this. Help support show, help Hopper. You can find the show and other products we work on at theblakeshousehow.com. So, uh, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, fifty pack of colored pencils, and more. From our T Public store, click on the T Public link on our website or go to T Public and search for Blake and Sasha. Hey, do we have our Blake and Sasha with Mark title replica belts in yet with our side plates? You know, it's funny. I, no, so, I get, like, for the one, I'm not lying back to you all, but I do, so I get a lot of random stuff <laughs> on my Instagram page. But I always look at pricing and stuff like that's out of curiosity. That's out of pure curiosity. I was looking through a pricing. It's like, you know, we play a lot of games on the show, so I figured why not I look into things. Yeah. To get a personalized belt for this podcast is almost four hundred dollars. <laughs> Aren't we worth it? Yeah, and that's we're not spending that kind of money on a personalized belt. We're about to use like once or twice. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I think I, th- I still think we should have action figures made of us. <laughs> well, actually, uh, no, technically, we can. When you, if you guys come to American Dream, there's a kiosk where it three D mm-hmm. scans you and makes you do a action trigger that is true also mandy actually ordered me a um personalized funko oh she told you yeah she oh. showed me. 
So that's pretty cool. I haven't yeah. got it. Once I get oh, it, I'll, I'll brag cool. about it. I'll show it online. I haven't got it yet. So once they get it, I'll show she it, it. it. She showed it to me. It looks really cool. I know. We were at the, we were at the breakfast the other morning. And she's like, I can't keep a secret. I got to show you this. <laughs> Just remember, mint in box. I might keep it in the box because my name's on the box and everything. I'm going to put it on my shelf up in, my, in the room. I'll keep it in the box. And, it, and then you should autograph it. So, all right. Um, let's get a break. We'll come right back. All right. Um, real fast. Um, let's go with the Nanny Nanny show. It is a new episode dropped this morning as you're hearing this. Brand new show. Probably going to be longer than this episode. So go listen to that right now. <laughs> 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 um, go pick up Mandy's book. I know I am available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Earned Death Publishing, in English and in Spanish. And if you're in the Kenosha area on September, tw- on September 30th, you can see Mandy at the inaugural Southport Literary Fair all day long. And she'll be reading, I know I am, at 2 p.m. in the reading room. Come join us in Kenosha for that. That being said, we are going to start not in the wrestling world for a change. We're going to do this. And now, let's see what's going on in the wild world of sports. I haven't played that in a while. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So... I'm not gonna lie. I I was not even gonna when, like, when we were on Sunday. I'm like, okay, well, this is football going on. We're not gonna talk NFL problem when we come back, and we'll it'll be a slow wrestling. Week. I already knew what was going on, and then I had some stuff to talk about. And all of a sudden, well, first of all, I was I want to address one thing before we get to Monday. Sunday night, I turned off the Giants game in the second quarter. <laughs> I was done. I couldn't handle that game. Um, boy, that was a fucking disaster. An absolute fucking disaster. Um, I, after the blocked field goal, the team kind of just fell apart. I'm not quite sure why they, they stopped running the ball when it was working. I'm not sure why they stopped doing that. But, um, yeah, that was a fucking disaster. <laughs> and um, I turned it off in the second quarter and went and watched World Tour in America instead with Mandy. Um, <laughs> instead of watching the second half of the game. I do feel bad for everybody, all the Giants fans ever in the building in the pouring rain. For that disaster of a football game, so, so I can't believe anybody left that game early for that rare reason. There. So, who do you put the blame on? Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> everybody, so, every everybody. single person made mistakes. The offensive line is awful. I don't know why they were throwing the ball against Dallas' defense that is number one against the pass. I have no idea why they were doing that. Like, so, especially when they were running the ball really well in the first quarter. I didn't understand what was going on. So then we, we include the general manager and the head coach in that. Everybody. I love okay. Dable, but come on now. Okay. Like, I love Brian Dable, but like, give me a break. <laughs> what a fucking disaster. It, it, it just seemed from, from what I saw, it seemed like their confidence was totally shot. After the um, block Google. After yeah. that block Google, yeah. it was over. Yeah. Like, oh, it's it, so it's like they gave up. They really did. In the second half, apparently it was worse. I didn't watch the second half. Apparently it was even worse in the second half. <laughs> well, thank God for that. 40 nothing was the final score. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what happened there. Is, according to NFL, is that the highest scoring game where the opponents have zero? Or is there one no, higher? there's been worse. I've seen worse. Okay. I've seen worse games than that. But like, okay. but that was the highest scoring game in Giants Stadium. And for a Giants game, it was shut out. That's the most they ever got shut out in a Giants yeah. game. As far as I know, in the NFL, there are no what's the word looking mercy for? rules. Yeah, like a mercy rule. Because you know what? Well, that's called the Belichick rule. That once you when Belichick used to run up the score on everybody, whenever he was like for no reason whatsoever, he would drop like fifty two on the Jets for no reason because he was an asshole. Like he just do that shit all the time for no reason. As you do. So speaking of the Jets, not intentional segue, but I said it, so we'll work it there. So wow, Monday night football. <laughs> Monday night. Uh... Football. Okay. Okay. Everyone knows what happened, but but I do want to hear everyone's side of this because this was a crazy, crazy, crazy moment. So, okay. Monday Night Football, 9-11. <laughs> For those who don't remember, it was 9-11. And we had a tribute on on Sunday night, by the way. But one of the best parts of Sunday night was Pino Latif singing the National Anthem, by the way. That was amazing on Sunday night. But Monday Night Football, it's 9-11. Crowd is raucous. The, the MetLife the Met Life actually looks like a Jets home game for a change, except for the Giants logo in the middle of the field. But everything else looked fantastic. Like, it looked great in that building. Um, Aaron Rodgers went out with the American flag. Like, like I, I think I was on the fan. They called him Captain of fucking, Captain fucking America. He runs out. And then he 
then four plays later, he tears his Achilles. <laughs> and that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, before I even get to the stuff, you do. I'm gonna so I'm gonna be honest with you people here. Okay. I'm watching Raw. <laughs> I was watching Raw because I didn't really care. I honestly didn't care. But I had it on my phone. I had the ESPN Plus on my phone. I was streaming on my phone, but I had the phone on my dresser thinking, oh, it's like the first quarter, whatever, I'll check it on the score. Not knowing what was actually going on. <laughs> I mean, no idea what was going on. So I go to grab my phone and Sal's texting me freaking out. <laughs> and I have no idea why. I have zero clue why. And it even like he's talking about what happened. I'm like, who are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I have zero clue. And he said Rogers. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so I did all my I research. think I said, I said one of your famous lines. Why aren't you paying attention? <laughs> I was honest. I'm being completely honest with you. I wasn't paying attention because I didn't think it mattered because it was the first quarter. I don't think it mattered. Um, my favorite part, of the way, my favorite part is when they cut to the Manning cast on ESPN. <laughs> were you watching the Manning cast or ESPN? What were you watching, Zell? I, I wound up watching the Manning cast. Okay, so how was that live? That's for the videos. How was the Manning cast reaction to that injury? Because the videos are crazy. They were, they okay. were just as confused as I was because it was, it looked innocent. There didn't, and nothing about that tackle looked bad. But then. They finally found, like, a day later, I saw this yesterday or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, they finally found a camera angle that showed the injury, and, yeah, I can, I can, I can see what happened there, so, uh, but at the time, everyone was just like, it it looked like an innocent tackle, I don't understand what happened, like, how the fuck did that happen? So, wow, Um, apparently, in in, at Life Stadium, the place literally deflated, and I don't blame them. I can't blame anybody. Like, I really don't at all. What a terrible two days at MetLife Stadium, by the way. But, um, <laughs> like, literally the flates. Indian burial ground. And, um, but somehow the Jets won the game. I, 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 so, so I have to ask you, Sal. I have to ask you, Sal. When you were, um, uh, <laughs> when you went to bed, did you see the overtime at all? No. Okay. So I'm watching Raw. Like I said, but I have my phone next to me. So I'm keeping track of the score because the score didn't change. The score really didn't change much. And I'm like, okay, this is actually a good game. It's actually turning out to be a really good football game. <laughs> then they tie it. And I'm like, it was when the Jets took the lead, and I'm like, they're not going to win this game, are they? <laughs> they'll win this damn game. And then they tie it, and then Buffalo ties it. We go to overtime. Raw's over. So I jumped over to ESPN on my TV. <laughs> I watched it over the TV. <laughs> and like when that pump return went off, I'm like, no way did it just pull this off. <laughs> it came off. But anyway, Jeff won, but that's at the point. Air Riders is now out for the year. <laughs> what a bizarre thing happened here. Dad, you've been quiet. Your thoughts? Uh, I got te- I was texted by several friends going. Did you hear what happened? Did you hear what happened about Rodgers? And I text back, says, no. Well, all of a sudden, they start sporing me clips, and I'm looking at the video, and even in slow motion, it was kind of like from the camera angles that he rolled his ankle, that he landed around and rolled his ankle, until there was, like uh, so I was saying, camera angle that got showed it, where and it looks like he outstretched the lower part of his leg when he landed to kind of like try to take some of the shock or the absorb from, from being hit and leg, instead of the leg basically kind of like going back, he straightened it out. And as the way down, you could tell by the impact that the Achilles tendon ruptured just from the impact, the way the heel came down on the ground it's and how the leg was stretched out straight. Instead of having, you know, like it bent and rolling, but I I kind of have mixed emotions because of the things he did while he was in Green Bay, but towards the end of his career Green Bay, how he acted more like a prima donna, asshole, douchewife, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, people said, you know, it's karma. Oh, yeah, it's karma. You kind of get what you gave out. Um, What... Mr. Rogers has to understand is 
He's not getting any younger. He's to that age where the injuries, even minor ones, take longer to heal up. And he's not bulletproof. He's not the gunslinger like he used to be. So he's got to realize that he's not bulletproof anymore. That when he gets hit, it's going to hurt. And they're gunning for him. So if you don't have a good front line that you have your confidence put up in, then you better develop a good long passing game. Well, the that was one of the funniest things coming out of the preseason when everyone was saying how bad the Jets' offensive line was. <laughs> and then this happened. So, oh, by the way, for those who maybe didn't know this, that um, Rodgers actually went into the game after having a calf injury in the preseason. He did injure his calf. And... According to do Tiki, so um, I listened to the New York Sports Radio like all day on Tuesday, all day Tuesday. I wanted to hear reactions and everything else. So I listened to the fan all day Tuesday. And Tiki Barber, who hosts obviously um, Tiki, um Evan and Tiki in the afternoons, he actually reached out to one of his doctors, his personal doctors, and asked what uh, their thoughts were. Instead, and the doctor actually said because this whole this whole conversation about the turf and all this kind of stuff. With a combination of his age, like Dad said, the previous calf injury, and apparently um, not enough fluids, that injury was down to happen no matter what. Wonderful. Yeah, that injury was bound to happen. So, like, yeah, that's wow. So now that Wilson is a Jets quarterback, <laughs> I need to get a new quarterback for my fantasy team. The first year I do fantasy, and like ever. I was my quarterback. I was my damn quarterback. Like what the I fuck? Was, I was about to mention that whoever had them for fantasy football I did. <laughs> now you got to hunt up for somebody else. Well, I, I luckily the reason I drafted went, I did have three quarterbacks. So I just put Maker Mayfield into the starting spot. So like, like at least I have that much. At least I have that much. But like still, like fuck. Well, um, now there's <laughs> means to go around like because of his injury. Now he's going to go back in seclusion and make a decision what he's going to do with the rest of his career. Not. He's going into surgery. He literally went into surgery. <laughs> I know that, but people take it. No, 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 no. Dad, 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 dad. Yeah. You're going with memes now. There's no news story about that. People are making no. jokes and making memes. That just don't, that's not a news story. That's a meme. Well, <laughs> so the, that, those, those are like the internet trolls, kind of like. Meme. And then right? like internet trolls. People make memes, and they're funny. Don't go with them seriously. They're funny. <laughs> They're actually really funny. The memes come out of this more hysterical. I'm not gonna lie. They're actually with them for a long time. <laughs> I, I, I I don't <laughs> was it you that sent me the Jets season highlights? Oh, that was my well, funny part is I said it to you and then Manny said it to me. <laughs> that was the funny part about that for me. It's literally just him like waiting in the tunnel and walking out. With him running the flag out. It was him running the flag out. Running the flag out. So, uh, <laughs> what, 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 what was the time on it? Five minutes into the game and he got it was, injured? It was not even that long. It was four plays. Not even. Literally four plays. On yeah, the, did he, he, did, never threw he did three running plays and one passing play. So he's 0 and 1 on the season. Was, was, was he, he never watching the pass? <laughs> was he watching Santino Morella or what? Believe, that was a joke, by the way. So that meme today too, by the way. I did see that meme of, of, mm-hmm. of Aaron Rodgers running and it was um, it was Santino Morella who just threw it out of the rubble. <laughs> 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 I saw that one this morning. <laughs> that would make me laugh. A- so actually, the one I think the sound that one that one the internet for me on Monday night was somebody that cut to the plot, cut to him in the um, blue charm tent, and it says Rodgers played a few snaps and decided to take a dark retreat. <laughs> that was my favorite. That was by far the winner. <laughs> Monday night. <laughs> I think the better a better meme would be who who's the guy that does the, the bark, the cue bark that's the ambassador now kind of oh, like I don't even know. Where he kind of tripped on the mat and went under There's a lot of jokes. There's a lot of funny memes. It was a it was a very funny meme couple of days. I do feel bad for Jets fans. Please don't get me wrong. I feel bad for that. I feel bad for you guys a lot. I feel like you. Like you guys didn't yeah, it's like I, I, I finally better. come out of the woodwork out of you know in the last 10 years if not longer i finally come out of the old work i'm brave enough to say i'm a fan again and i crawl and then, back yeah well, you're there, better you really do like there, there's, from this there's backlash on on twofold one there was a tavern down here jack's american pub oh there, yes we have to talk about that they had this promotion that if aaron Rodgers starts Okay, okay. Yeah. Actually, okay, that was explained. Actually, they explained it better. It wasn't just right. when Aaron Rodgers starts. It, it, right. it, it's when the Jets play when the Packers uh-huh. aren't. It actually didn't have to do with Aaron Rodgers. That was the misconfusion. That was the confusion. 
So like the, the thing's still in effect, even though Aaron Rodgers isn't playing, it's still in effect. So the thing is, if the Jets <laughs> lose and the Packers aren't playing, so like the bar is only airing the Jets game and not a Packers game, then the bar will pay your tab. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, that night, no, everyone had to pay their own tab. Well, because what happened was, there's a video. The video is amazing. The video, the newscast here. With the, the, my favorite part was going to the newscasters in the studio, cackling. They're literally laughing. <laughs> that was my favorite part. But um, what happened was Aaron Rodgers went down, and everybody in the bar rang up their freaking bar bill. Everybody did. <laughs> yep. And then, it, and then they took the lead of the crowd was booing. The crowd in the bar was booing when they took the lead in the fourth corner. And then when the touchdown went out in overtime, the place went dead silent because everyone realized, oh, fuck, we have to pay our dabs. <laughs> We're screwed. Oh, my God, that was amazing. The, uh, the other part of this is that uh, for the trade, the Packers were going to get the first round draft pick from Jets. Well, it, it all hinged on Aaron basically playing 65% of the season. Now they get a second round draft pick. They're going to get a second round draft yep, pick. Now they get a that, second that, round. That's what it is. That's what it is now. It's, yeah. it's what it is. So how it is. God knows what else is going to happen from this. Well, it's over now. It's over, really. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> um, So the Packers won. Good for them. Um, I, the, so my joke, hey! my joke on Monday on, on Tuesday morning. Well, it looks like the Jets and the Packers both woman on Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 Jordan Love beat up on the Bears. Everyone beats up on the Bears. <laughs> Everyone dies. The Bears. <laughs> the Bears. So overall, it was a good weekend, except for that crap tackler Giants game and Aaron Rodgers injury. The like, football game ended up being great. If you weren't rooting for the Jets, that, that football game was great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, week one so far has been surprising. So we won over. We won over. So it's not so far. Okay, so so it, it, it's it's been surprising. Week two starts, week two starts before this episode drops. <laughs> yeah. So it's surprising, and now let's see what happens in week two. What was that meme? What was the thing I sent you? Sal? Let me find it real fast on Instagram before we go into the rest of the stuff. We don't. Have, like I said, we don't have a whole lot. But I do want to get to some stuff. Um, let me find it real fast. But it was very, very accurate to the weekend. We just find it here. I know I sent it to you on Instagram. I just gotta find it best. No, I can't find it. Um, <laughs> it had to do with the um the, the various co- various quarterbacks that got paid a shit ton of money. Now I can't find it. Oh, um, I only had like one touchdown or whatever. A touchdown out of all the checks that were made, like it was bad. <laughs> it was really the best. I thought you sent. I thought you texted that to me. I'm looking. I can't find it now. I cannot find it. But no, that was one of those like wow. That it's fucked up. It, it was a fucked up day. It was a weird day. But it's football sometimes. Sometimes it's football. You can't really complain. You can't really do much about it. And it's only week one. I think a lot of people are going to relax. It is only week one. You know? So, that being said, let's move on. Let's get into our normal topic of conversation. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. So, before we get into the big news, and we'll get there, I actually have a positive for a change reaction to something someone said. So, um, let's play the clip that I put up on my personal Facebook page as a joke. I put this up as a joke. I, I was literally just messing around. I found it hysterical that Dad said this and literally brought the show to a halt. This is what was said last week. I, I, I get see you have Judgment Day. Magenta on Raw, and then Judgment Day Violet for SmackDown. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no? Yes? Maybe? So the video is hysterical. Is it literally like we, me and Sal looked at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I get a text message from my um, one of my pillow friends, Pat, and he's like, I have to say something like, can you post whatever you're going to say on the Facebook page so that I can screen cap it, put it in the run sheet, and we'll bring it up on the show. So Pat, put on my Facebook. Um, I'm down with this, Mark. I don't care how insane everyone thinks it is. I 100% endorse this. <laughs> don't encourage this, people. Don't encourage this. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why not? If if we're we're trying to you have storylines kind of go back a little bit of old school, I mean this would be great because then if you're increasing the judgment day by say adding 
J.D. McDonough and possibly main event Jey Uso. He's not joining Judgment Day. Jey Uso is not joining Judgment Day. Uh, you know, the old phrase not never say never. I got a new meme for you. I got a new meme for you, Blake. Come to your wife. Never say never. I'm telling you he's not. But anyway. <laughs> So thank you, Pat, for that. That was very funny. That was very good. You know, so, I mean, you know, anything is possible. <laughs> anyway, I'm sad to be funny. Me. Anyway, that's not, that's, that's not even something I can read. I, I can't really explain that joke, so I'm not going to read it, but it's very funny. <laughs> <All right>. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the news. Um, so, funny part, about, man. funny part about this week, we have one massive news story and a few minor ones. And I think... I wrote it in a different order, but I think we're going to go with the minor stuff first because Are you sure? okay. gonna, because it's going to take us a little longer to talk about the big story. We always talk about the big stuff last, so let me go real fast. First of all, okay, all um, right. something I'm looking forward to, I'm excited about it. I just put this on here because I'm excited about it. Finally, I've been complaining about this for years. Yeah. New Japan, they announced that they're going to be coming out with a brand new New Japan World app. App. They have never had an app. Oh. I'm so damn excited. Yeah. Uh, in the US, Wait, um, like a streaming app? Yes, an actual streaming app for New Japan World in America. They've never done this before. I am so damn excited oh. for this. I am so sick and tired of watching it when I look up my damn computer to the because there's no way to stream it on my from my phone. So I have to hook up my damn computer to the TV to a freaking mm-hmm. cord. Like I hate the setup. So I'm so damn happy soon and hopefully before the because it's trying to get this number for the end of the year. It's Wrestle Kingdom. So like Wrestle Kingdom is so nice to watch it on an app without having to go through all the rigor roll. Of having to figure out how to watch it, I'm still damn happy. <laughs> I that that's got to tell you how popular New Japan is getting. Yeah, never that... complaining. You prefer a lot of complaining. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, without a doubt. But I mean, if you want to see that the the wrestling show, it, I'm glad you're doing this because now they can get their product out for more people to watch, and it's just going to become more popular. I agree. I'm looking forward to this soon. As soon as they announce, trust me, I am downloading it immediately. Um, next story, main event of Raw. What's up, Del? I just saw the Dancing with the Stars thing you sent me. Um, that last one just shocked me. But, um, yeah, so, um, end of Raw. So, Sal has a tendency of, so funny part about Monday night. Sal had an excuse to not watch Raw because he's watching the Death game. And normally, he doesn't watch the main event of Raw anyway, he's usually asleep. So, like, it was a bit bizarre that you actually were asleep anyway before the overtime of the death game. It made me laugh. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny now looking at it. But the main event <laughs> was um, Rhea and Raquel for the Women's Championship. By the way, they put on a hell of a match. This is what I thought out there. Nobody remembers that. Oh, yeah. Match. It was a hell of a fucking wrestling match. You know, until it was interrupted. Uh, interrupted. But it was um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the one and only Nia Jax came back. <laughs> Did not expect this. Did not expect to be talking about Nia Jax today. Again. Again. Um, so she attacked um, Raquel Rodriguez, cost her the match. And then, I, uh, for reasons I still don't understand, she also went after Rhea Ripley. <laughs> um, a lot of people are pissed. I think we have Rhea's new opponent. Well, a lot of people are pissed that Nia is here. Again. Um, <laughs> past issues with injury, injuring people and all this kind of stuff. But it's the endeavor. Yeah, yeah. People just don't. Like well, people just don't like her anyway. In general, it's a general sentiment. People just don't like her. Um, I actually have a theory. I have a nice storyline, a little theory that will probably be bullshit, but I'm gonna throw a theory out there that um, Nia Jax was sent by the Bloodline to attack Rhea Ripley because the Judgment Day's been talking shit about the Bloodline. So Roman and Paul sent Nia because she's part of because she's part of the Samoan, di- Samoan the Samoan family to attack Rhea and go after the title because they can't do anything about it because they men can't go after the women. <laughs> but that's my theory. Wouldn't you think it works on paper? It does. <laughs> but wouldn't you think that Tamina would have been a better choice? But not, but, but, but who cares about Tamina? That's the problem. Nobody cares about Tamina. Wow! Wow! <laughs> oh, yikes! <laughs> God, but now I, I think Nia Jax has made a statement that she's gunning for the title, and she's not going to let anyone stand in her way for it. No, so, um, Sal, what was your reaction when I texted you? Like, what the <laughs> what the hell's going on? Um, be a little unexpected. Um, um, 
yeah. Um, I mean, if she didn't show up at the Rumble or whatever it was, it would have been more of a shock. But like, she just popped her head in like eight months ago. So like, who cares? It's still not the Rumble. Like, you could get away with coming in the Rumble. There's a lot of women that hop in the Rumble, then we never see them for like another year at the Rumble. Like, we have mm-hmm. a lot of people that do that. Like, that's most of <laughs> half the day women Rumble sometimes is like old like, Kelly Kelly's in the Rumble every year, and nobody cares. Let's just leave it at that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what I. I mean, according to what I remember, Mr. Rumble, yeah, by the way, she missed Rumble, yeah, Kelly Kelly. She's been in every one, I think. <laughs> what I read about Naya when she was let go is she basically was continuing to work out and, and do uh, cardio and strength training. I mean, she looks um, fantastic. Oh, she looks great. Yeah, she looks, she and, looks great. And, she then, does. and then her, her uh, desire was to go into modeling. For, she does, but she does model. That's not right, it's, 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 she really does model. Right. Plus size plus size woman. Yeah, and, and here's the thing years. about Naya. If you look at her, she's gorgeous. She has a great yeah, face no, I'm not arguing that. And, and, and that facial structure, and she has wonderful personality, and the rest of her ain't bad either. The problem with it is that she injured a lot of people and people are pissed about it. And I understand. I get it. Like I understand people's thought process there. But again, it's been a couple it's been a while. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, maybe well, she didn't gone. break anybody's neck to the point where they have to retire. They're <laughs> not wrong. Ouch. Not wrong. Ouch. You're not wrong. So, Ouch. one more the story that came out of NXT <clears throat> made that with Tiffany Stratton defending the NXT Women's Championship against Becky Lynch. Stratton Mania. I'm not going to bullshit you here. When I'm watching the match, I was like, "How are we getting out of this? Like, how are we getting out of this? You can't have Becky lose." But you can't have st- you can't have. I'm gonna say if you if you didn't see this coming from a mile away, not even a mile. If you didn't see this coming from t- hundred miles away, my whole thing was here. I didn't think they hit the belt offer. I figured it would end like because they were setting up other things on the show. Like throughout the show, they were setting up other things. They were setting up other things with Becky and other women on the roster. So I figured they were going to like have somebody interfere and like it ended in a disqualification. That's where my brain went. Becky wouldn't lose and Tiffany would still have her belt. That's how my brain went throughout the show. Um, I will say, there's something about NXT. When people go back to NXT, except Dana Brooke, when everyone goes back to NXT, <laughs> they get, they, they have a different side Ooh. of them. Like, Baron Corbin, Baron Corbin has a whole new character right now, and it's awesome. Like, I really like his whole new character going on right now. It's fun. Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, Butch is Butch on SmackDown. He comes to NXT. And he's Pete Dunne again, and nobody questions it. He's cutting promos like he used to. <laughs> like it was. Like he, they're setting up a a. I'm not. I'm not calling him Butch because it's NXT. Pete Dunne Tyler Bate match on Tuesday. Part of this whole this whole like round robin thing you're doing, and he cuts his promo I'm like, where has this been for the last year? Like this is the Pete Dunne I love. Like where has this been? <laughs> um, exactly. But Becky comes down, and you're used to the formula like Becky match. We've been seeing it for years. Becky's in the ring doing cartwheels, all these rhythm moves. I'm like, where is this been? I'm like, where is this Becky been? Like, we haven't seen this Becky in years. It's nice to see. And she had, they had a hell of a match. It was a clean finish. It was a really good match. Um, they did not let Becky take out of um Stephanie's finisher. By the by, that did not happen. That kind of I thought that was kind of important. Yep. But um, they didn't let her hit it to make sure he didn't she didn't kick out of it, which I appreciated. And then Becky hit the inhale slam. Um, and by the way, uh, Tiffany, by the way, came out extremely serious for this match, too. Like, it was actually a nice surprise. It was a nice change of pace. Mm-hmm. And Becky hit the inhale slam and won the title. <laughs> and now yeah. Becky Lynch is the, for the first time ever, the NXT Women's Champion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you went by the storyline, this is the only belt that's been elusive to her. Now she has True. it. So. True. She's the only horsewoman that didn't win the belt before. All right. So but now, still, wow. <laughs> so now she has this. So here's my question on this: Does this mean that Becky's going to make more appearances on NXT, or is she going to take the belt and go on to say SmackDown? Yes, I think it's going to be. Oh, she's on Raw. First of all, she's on Raw. Okay. Wow. And, and honestly, I yes, I think it's going to be. She's going to be both. I think it's going to be both, just like um, Dom does. But if you're interesting about Dom, I've noticed, the North American champion, he hasn't been in front of the crowd the last couple of weeks. He's been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes backstage stuff. Mm-hmm. Obviously, at 
the NXT arena. It's obviously there. So I have a feeling they pre-recorded a bunch of stuff with Dom for the next couple of weeks mm-hmm. while he was there for doing the um, guest referee spot. Okay. He was there for that because he was by himself for that. Rio wasn't there. There was no Judgment Day members there. There was no one there. Mm-hmm. It was just him. So they pre-recorded some stuff to set up future things. Like they're doing Dom versus Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali at No Mercy. So they recorded a bunch of behind, backstage stuff. And next week, um, it's the title. Not, it's not title or title. It's champion versus champion. They're not doing unification or anything. It's just a champion versus champion match. Carmelo. Carmelo versus Dom on the next next week. But I think it's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. So, because Dom is kind of doing stuff by himself, and, and this is my theory, is J.D. McDonough comes in, and they kicked Dom out because no, with the match there's against no way. Carmelo, no, no, there's no hear, way. Hear me out. Hear me out. Mm. The match against Carmelo, he loses and embarrasses the judgment. But it's not, it's not a title win. match. He's already lost a match in NXT. No, I understand sure. that. But oh, when when you, know, I understand what you're saying. I get okay. what you're saying. But Rhea okay. and Dom lost a match recently on NXT. They both lost a match. <laughs> like, Salah said NXT doesn't matter. At the end of the day, losing <laughs> a match, a singles match against the champion of NXT, it's not going to matter to Dominic Mysterio and Judgment Day. It's not going to matter. <laughs> I'm just being honest here. Especially a non-title match against the world champion of that of that show. Like, it's not going to matter. Like, <laughs> and honestly, I don't even see a finish happening. Because I don't think they want Dom to get pinned. I, I think I don't think they can finish happening. I can see Mustafa Ali and um, Ilya Dragunov interfering because they're the opponents for the next show. Do you, you know, see and, Drake or Dragon Lee coming in? Maybe, maybe because Dragon Lee's involved. You know, um, you know, Batman over there, Dragon Lee, and um, <laughs> Rhea called him Batman once. Something's coming with that. By the way, I was laughing my ass off the act because um, Rhea called Axiom a Power Ranger, so the crowd <laughs> Power Ranger at Axiom during his match on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I if you, if you, if cracked you, up laughing at that. Like, wow. <laughs> if you look at his. His outfit. It, it, oh no, I agree with it. It's very know. funny. It's very, very funny. <laughs> but no, like one more thing before we get to the big story. My favorite thing to do on Tuesday night sometimes <laughs> is when weird shit happens at NXT. <laughs> Just send pictures to Sal with no context whatsoever. <laughs> no context whatsoever. So when I, so <laughs> so I'm watching. We're watching NXT. And I and I'm the, they're doing this round robin tournament for number one contendership for Noam Dar's Heritage Cup tournament thing, and it was uh, they and they've been doing this whole metaphor thing where they're up and they have this little but where the toxic attraction used to have their thing metaphor taken over and they do their they have their setup on top and watch the matches for the round robin tournament. It makes sense, completely makes perfect sense to me. Last couple of weeks, it's gotten weirder and weirder. <laughs> it's gotten weirder and weirder up there. Noam Dar's a treat. He's a fucking treat. What? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I. Uh, I, I completely lost it because I said it was so stupid. I could not stop laughing. <laughs> stop laughing. We cut to the top, and for some reason, he's sitting on an elephant with a telescope. <laughs> I can't lie. It was like a sudden emergency. And then Joseph's like, Is that a safari? <laughs> he's laughing at that. <laughs> who, was, who was dressed up as the panda? Was it Oramenza? Um, yeah, the Ormans. <laughs> it was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. <laughs> so I said it to I said it to you, Sal, and I said it to Christian, who was in his room on the phone with his, with his best friend playing video games. And I said to him, too. He came out like, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell's going on? <laughs> so I had to show him, but that was too damn funny to not share out of context. <laughs> no reason. But, All right. I, I, I think the other surprise that I, I is interested in storyline is, uh, Thea Hale. Oh, yeah. The Thea Hale, don't, the Thea Hale Breaking Bad storyline going on right now. So I, I want to say. I did not see coming. She, uh, she was like, she's making shopping. drugs on, on TV. No. Not, but, see, that's the problem. You can't, you can't say Breaking Bad without going, people going to the TV show. No. She's um, hanging out with JCK <laughs> and actually like, not being part of Chase U and like being a bad oh. person for a change. And, and she's going to go strange. on a shopping. Yeah. And she's going on a shopping spree to change her. Look, look, next week's show. I'm interested how that's going to go. But my favorite part is she doesn't know how to be bad at all. She doesn't have a clue what she's doing, which makes it more entertaining. It makes it really entertaining. And what makes it more fun, she's only 19. So, like, I'm not even sure if this is a gimmick or they're just having fun with it because she's a 19 and you can do this. Because she's so young. Because she is so damn young. It, it, so, it's the mean girl's theory. 
right? So let's get to the big story. Um, we talked about it back in April, but now it's official. Um, WWE and UFC have officially been merged through Endeavor, and they are now under the um, the term TKO Group Hand Holdings, which, by the way, I think it's such a stupid name, but whatever, we'll go with it. Um, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> nothing. It means nothing. Yeah. Um, and um, TKO is now on the um, stock, stock exchange under that name, which, again, is very dumb. Um, it really like WWE stands for something. UFC stands for something. TKO does not stand for anything. <laughs> I didn't oh. I didn't think they could use TKO because I thought someone already copyrighted it for one of their trademarks. Well, apparently the they did. They did. <laughs> it's a thing. Especially a thing, though. Know, Minota's a TKO Group Holdings and TKO on the stock market. So technically, the company is called TKO Group Holdings. Okay. Technically. But it's under Endeavor. Um, wow, this is a thing now, officially. Um, happened Tuesday morning. Vince McMahon is officially no longer the majority holder of WWE. <laughs> I, I cannot believe I'm saying that sentence. Like, I cannot believe it. Um, Here we are. It's, it's end of 2023. This has been a bizarre year as it is. It's been a bizarre year. But we're heading into the fall as Vince McMahon no longer the top, the majority holder of WWE. He, so how it's working here is um, Endeavor. Um, as a, The Endeavor has, it has owns 51% of TK Holdings and WWE shareholders over the other 49%. Um, all of those X, I'm not, no, that's how it's explained. That's how it's explained. And mm-hmm. all of, like the extra like stock that Vince had, like all that extra like B class stock that was making that got him back in power back in January, he no longer has. He has none of that anymore. <laughs> um, he now has to answer to Area Manuel. And um, Nick Khan is now the president of WWE. Um, <laughs> um the con, by the way. Now, I so, so, uh, said to Mandy, because I'm reading stuff, catching up on stuff on Tuesday night during NXT. I'm just trying to catch up on all this because we're doing the show today. And I'm catching up on all the stories. That's what I knew what I was talking about. And it was such a strange paragraph. Look at Mandy and said, so WWE President Nick Khan said that Paula Beck is still head of creative. <laughs> but what a weird sentence that was. <laughs> it was a strange sentence. Yeah. Um, you had to kind of read it twice? I, it's like, it was weird. Like, it's such a weird thing to say. Um, Sal, your thoughts on this whole thing? Um, well, their stock is down from where they started yesterday, officially. Oh, really? Uh, it, and it this is, is on officially? Wednesday, obviously. It is officially down again? Because there was one on Tuesday. So now it's down? <laughs> um, it's currently at $101 even. Christ. <laughs> and it started at 102 I believe, yesterday. Oh, it was 103 It was 103 yesterday when I checked it. So, oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, they're they're already losing money. That didn't take that makes long. me happy. It didn't take very long. Um. So, I'm kind of curious to see. Obviously, that the the product's not going to change overnight, but you know the product's going to change a little bit. So, from so I'm, hearing, I'm hearing, kind of curious to see what happens. A couple of things I've heard for sure is happening, much like we dealt with with the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. Well, there was a whole bunch of stuff that had to happen behind the scenes first. Like you have to like get rid of a lot of jobs because now there's a lot of people under the same job title. So now you had to get rid of people behind the scenes. That's first things first. That's the first thing you got to do. Oh, um, the second. And by the way, I uh, I think it was Jason Powell was funny. He's like, I'm not sure what's going to happen with all these other people, but the p- video people over at UFC should watch out because WWE is the best in the business at it. <laughs> so they better watch out. <laughs> Because, like, if you have a choice, you're going to have to <laughs> people. I would go to them. I would go to them. I can afford them. Like, they're fantastic. <laughs> they're <amazing. laughs> but, yeah, sorry, Sal. I just wanted to bring that up. Did you mention that? So I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, no, I mean, like I said, I'm just curious to see how the product is going to potentially change in the future. And um, it's going to be interesting. Are they going to stay PG? Are they going to still do that whole you know be a star thing or are they still done that in a long time i haven't seen the i haven't seen the be a star campaign in years like legitimate years yeah Uh, (laughs) is the make a wish thing still going to be a thing like i'm 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 kind of curious as to what direction they're going to take the company in because i just for some reason i just i don't see them wanting to keep it as a pg product i mean i know i wouldn't but that's just me. Well, I well, look at it this way. I'm just comparing. If we're comparing companies, WWE right now is the hottest it's been in a decade. I mean, every building sold out. Shows are other backs. 
people are watching the most like SmackDown is literally the number one show on Fridays on all of television, not just basic television on all of TV. Like I've never WWE hasn't been this red hot in a decade. Like they're so hot. Do you really want us to that right now? Mm-hmm. Oh, if you think you could make it better, yeah, no, true. Um, that your thoughts? I, mean, I have one other thing I want to bring up. But I'll have that throw it first. Um, time is going to tell how this is going to work. Um, it's it's kind of too early, but if you kind of have WWE run their entity and all you got to do is basically have communication on a daily basis, then fine. But if you kind of stick your nose into it and, and try to change something on it, I don't think it, it's right now time for a big change. It, it is good all around. My understanding is that WWE had a hiring freeze until the merger went through. And now that the merger has gone through, the hiring freeze is gone. But how, so, but was there a hiring freeze? Because I kept hearing rumors that Carlito is hired to a contract or Brian Hillman Jr. is hired to a contract. Obviously, Nia Jack was hired back in January. Like, yeah. like obviously, like, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's, that was a thing that the WWE had a hiring freeze because he wanted to make sure that the merger went through. Oh, no, I agree with you. I just yeah. don't know how, right. how reliable that is. Because I've seen it too. I've right. heard the same throw you did, but I don't know how right. reliable that was. So, so my thing is, is now if there's no hiring freeze, are they going to kind of pick up some of the wrestlers they let go previously? Um, or or are you going to... Most of them went to AEW. Most of those wrestlers went to AEW. Right. Or I, I know. Are, are you pushing harder to see what NXT develops and then bring them up to the main roster? They have enough people in NXT. No, oh, speaking getting... of... Ahead, so. uh, I, I was just randomly thinking about this as you are talking about NXT and people. Uh, I read that they took... Gable Stevenson's profile off the website. Oh, I didn't know that. That's news to me. That isn't really to me. I did not. I'm looking at our profile. I did not know that. Wow. Yeah, I, I just hey. just popped in my head as you were talking about that. I will look wow. at our profile to confirm. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to see from my own two eyes more than anything else. But um, because I mean, now that the next future NXT is the breakout tournament, the breakout tournament. Breakout they announced tournament. that. They didn't announce that this week. They didn't announce right. That. So. My thing is, if you're going to have a women's breakout tournament, then are you also going to have a men's breakout tournament? I think you do them separately. A lot of times, men have to do it at the same time, and it was really hard to follow. So do them separately this time, to <laughs> be completely honest here. So, I mean, do we expect any surprises coming out for the women's breakout I tournament? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I haven't even thought about it. I have not thought about it at all. Um, yeah, I've not thought about it at all. So I'm looking up here. So the only thing I will say, the one thing I was going to say... um. NXT, the only thing I'm worried about NXT is they have a shitload of people on the roster, and they were doing a bunch of churning before the merger, where they were letting go people that were not ready. So I expect mm-hmm. the bloodletting on NXT soon. I really do expect it now. Mm-hmm. Like a bloodletting. Like a whole bunch of people that we have not seen on TV, or we have seen on TV. By the way, according to he is on the roster page, so I'm looking at WWE.com right now. He is on the roster, on the current roster page. Oh, okay. He's right here next mm-hmm. to Finn Balor on the roster page. So I'm looking at it right now. So, um, anyway, so the I, I don't know. I expect a lot of lightning. But the only thing I was going to think about, I read this. So the TV deals have not been officially signed yet. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't expire until next year. So now that the merger's over, they, that's the next thing to work on. That's the next thing to work mm-hmm. on. I'm hearing things again because Nick Khan yeah. has connections everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Which is why he's the president of WWE now. And um, he's working on things, and there's a possibility that. One or two WWE shows might move over to Disney, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Video. Um, appearing things like so, SmackDown. Apparently, SmackDown might move over to like Disney. Might be offering them for SmackDown. And so are we talking Max, about? I've heard, I've heard ABC. I've heard like ESPN Plus. Like I've heard these literally in the last twenty four hours. So. Are we talking about WWE content leaving Peacock? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. I've heard a lot of things. Especially, I mean, well, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. Right now, WWE has three separate TV contracts. They have the one that's on USA Network with Raw and NXT. Correct. They have the Peacock deal, which expired in 2025. And mm-hmm. they have the Fox deal, which expires. And the Fox and the, and the USA deal both end at the end, one year from now. I believe okay. the fact that about a year or like 11 months from now, 
those two contracts expire. Okay. I'm hearing because they're on separate technically Fox and NBC Universal are two different companies. You know that. And Fox right, and right. you know that. So the word going around is that Disney's interested in SmackDown. <coughs> so but isn't Disney Fox? No, not Fox TV. No, oh, right, 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 right. Because right. of the whole like because of the whole thing that right. can't have and Fox. Yeah. Is it, isn't that the whole thing is Disney, ESPN, and Hulu? Well, not even that. They can, like, I think it was like a monopoly thing. Okay. They can't have ABC and Fox, but like they can't have Fox Sports and ESPN. Like they can't have that. Like they can't have Fox Sports and ESPN because of the monopoly thing. It's a legal thing. The, I mean, with to go to but they have the rights to FX. They have the rights to things like that. Like they have the rights to these other stations. And if ESPN Plus I and mean, ESPN, if you yeah. throw SmackDown on Friday night on ESPN, so ESPN two, like that's a big deal. I think if you would go to Disney Plus, you would have to create a whole new category for or, or ESPN Plus. ESPN already has a WWE station thing on their on their app. Mm-hmm. They already have a WWE thing on the ESPN app. Well, they're well, FS1. No, because the problem is most people don't have FS1. Most people don't have that. Okay. That's why if you're going to move from Fox, you move to like ESPN or ABC. Okay. You don't move to FS1. You know what I mean? That's going to be less money for you. You want more money, you you go linear. You go to the, or you mm-hmm. go to ESPN Plus and you go streaming, which is the future. Okay. Future. Like, what's the same thing with the Star doing this year? It's literally on ABC, Disney Plus, and Hulu. Like, it's everywhere this year because they, it's Rider Strike, but like, they're doing it this year. Like, it's interesting, you know? <laughs> I don't know. We will find out more, I guess. And we go. Any other thoughts on this before we get out of here? All I can say is, uh, you know, like, time's going to tell how the project's going to do with the merger and whether or not it's going to be successful or not. But if the stock that you're trading right now isn't going for what you want it and it keeps going down, then you got to do something to kind of help to bump things up. I mean, you got to sweeten the pot. I I, and I think the reason why the stock is kind of going down is I think people want to see how this is going to play out before the investor money. Well, I agree with that. I agree with that sentiment. Oh, by the way, there's one other thing they didn't. The one thing I didn't. Jason Powell brought up. I was listening to um, Jason Powell Wade Keller this morning while I was working, and Jason Powell made up a good thing. There, this may not affect us, like as people watching WWE. But there's a possibility, like, they just announced the Rumble. The Rumble's going to be in Tampa in January. Mm-hmm. And it's going to announce today. What if USC runs the show on Friday in the same building the day before? And then you have a weekend of two big events in the same building. That's something that Endeavor would do. You do a USC show on, like, Friday or, or on mm-hmm. Sunday. And WWE's already got Saturday night set for the Rumble. You don't do it on Sunday that weekend because that's NFL's championship weekend. But you know what I'm saying. It's that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. Like that kind of stuff you can't do it on Sunday, obviously that weekend. So, like, just to right. kind of you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> right. just to kind of throw it out there with this is do you think that there'll be UFC stars make an appearance on WWE programming? Yes. hundred percent yes. Okay. And vice versa. And I think vice versa. Okay. But I wouldn't do it too much because I it, it's a weird situation. Like I expect like Conor McGregor to pop up on WWE TV. I really do. I expect something like that to happen. Yeah, yeah. But how many? But I think it was Nick Khan that said something recently because Ari Emanuel actually thinks that WWE and UFC fans are the same people. He actually thinks that, and Nick Khan said the complete opposite. <laughs> he said he thinks maybe at maximum four percent of WWE people even know who UFC stars are. Yeah, it, maybe four percent. They, they that, each have their own fan base. To me. That's more accurate to me, I think. Yeah, they each have their own fan base, so you can't I make agree. an assumption. I agree with that sentiment. Like, I'm just saying that's something that was brought up, too. So, like, also, I'm, also, I'm does, that, does that mean the number of, as you call it, uh, pay per view live events will decrease? I don't know. I don't know. I'm so sorry. What's going on. I guess we're not doing a WWE show in December because that would have been announced already. Which I'm appreciating again this year, by the by. For someone who's trying to plan a winter a Christmas break for us, I'm very happy there's no WWE show in December. Because uh-huh. so. that thing is if you if you have less live events, pay for live events, it decreases. Does that mean that the talent's number of days I don't know? I, 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 that's a good question. 
good question. I don't have an answer to. I don't have an answer to that question. I, I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out. Um, all right. I think we're going to get out of here now. Okay. It, this. So I, I I didn't bother to catch you guys from music this week because I'm like, well, we opened up with um, Bowling Super we'll end it with the brand new Riley Cyrus. Used to be young, which I, I immediately, I don't, I'm not a huge like, go crazy about Cyrus songs, but this song like hit me hard when I heard it the first time. <laughs> I'm like, this one hit me hard. <laughs> Damn. I see a theme here. Well, this one hit me. I was like, okay, I, perfect. So, all right. Um, so I'll take it away. Go. Yeah, for more information, and then catch up for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch us on YouTube. Uh, go to our fabulous website, the and please, 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 please don't forget comment or leave a rating and review, and we will either make fun of you or rate it on the show. <laughs> or both. <laughs> or both. Or both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Hey, first of all, I want to thank Pat for the comment. Thank you, Pat. Much appreciated. And you don't know how much it means to me. Uh, so, people, just keep it coming. If you agree with me, great. If you don't agree with me, that's fine, too. It's your choice, your opinion. And that's just it. I, I don't count out anyone's opinion. If it's different than mine or if it, 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 it's similar to mine, whatever. Okay, so everyone has their own say. So, hey, based on that, if you have to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at, Patronize these people. These are the young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling sports entertainment. They want to entertain you with their moves, their character gimmick, the promo skills, everything to be an all-around good wrestler. So that way they get noticed and basically get to that brass ring to a major company organization. And you'll be amazed on what these young men and women can do to entertain you because... That's their job is for two and a half, three hours to entertain you and focus on what they're doing. And if they do it well, yeah, it's fantastic. And you'll have a great time. And you'll feel like, holy cow, holy shit, man, this is a good match. This is a good wrestler. I hope I, I, I see better things for this person. And sometimes you do. So there you go. All right. Um so I, I made a mistake when I closed the show last week, and I said I'm going to talk about Impact 1000. Notice there was no talk about it because it hasn't aired yet. <laughs> I mixed the weeks up. It's actually airing this week. So when this episode drops, it would already have happened, and I will talk about it next week. To do, I am excited. For it. I am really excited. I just messed up my weeks last week. <laughs> so I also heard I, something in the link. There's something going on with ODB. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no clue. Okay. But I, I will say something. I do laugh. I do laugh. Um, Impact 1000. They announced that it's a two part episode, so 1000 is going over two weeks. <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. Uh, why would you do that? <laughs> Very impacting to do. Um, that being said, let's get out of here. I'm like, um, I'm Mark. It's been your pleasure. <laughs> Listening to the Blake and South show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, we love you guys. Send in your comments, whatever. We want this to be. Great. See ya. Bye. That's because I used to be young. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. And good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs>